go back to the Old Testament book of Genesis in chapter number 37. And with all these guest preachers we got, we'll try to get one of them to help us with devotions in the morning. Or to have maybe a tag team uh, for in the morning or something. So we'll uh, talk to them and see how things go. Did you make it these guys sing even? I should have asked earlier this morning. My wife is not here to be able to play the piano, so I see thumbs pointing back. Is that a thumbs up or is that a is that a volunteer? All right. Is that pastor and wife, pastor or Mrs. Or pastor? Uh, okay, it's all then. So, well, do you play the piano, preacher? I know. I know. I play the guitar. Okay. Do you have the guitar with you? I've got one at home. I'll send you the guitar in the morning, so that'll be no problem. And uh, you'll have to spend an hour getting in tune. You probably haven't been played in 50 years, but other than that, we'll go from there. So maybe you can be ready for us in the morning. We'll discuss that momentarily. All right. We've been looking at the making of a servant. We did a series on this during our executive staff and field staff meetings it's been probably about three maybe four years ago and the Lord laid on my heart to revisit it with the uh, employees and the missionary staff that is here we've been looking at uh, Joseph and how God made him a servant and we've been examining some of the things that God will put an individual through in order to get them uh, where they need to be in order to follow him it all began in Joseph's life with just a simple dream that he had and of course his brothers hated him Joseph came from a family that had internal conflict and there was a lot of unrest and there's a lot of resentment rejection and uh, hatefulness that had been expressed in his family his dreams only agitated the situation and the Bible said that his brothers hated him the more and then it hated him yet the more and so we see that there is a compounding of the rejection in Joseph's life by his brethren and his family members and of course with Jacob his father uh, they all mocked him. And the Bible uh, gives us three things, I believe, that is implied in the scripture and the text. They uh, mocked and they, the proclamation of divine truth. They mocked the precepts of divine truth and the power of divine truth. And as a result of that, there's going to be judgment come upon them. Uh, God's going to use it not only in Joseph's life, but he's also going to use it in Jacob's life. And we're going to see that God's going to deal with him. And while he's building and making and molding Joseph, he's also working in the lives and the hearts of his brethren. We find that God is going to deal with them for 22 years. And while the Lord's dealing with Joseph in the land of Egypt, he's also dealing with Jacob in the land of Canaan. He's also dealing with uh, his brothers. And the Bible tells us in the scriptures, if you look in chapter number 37, <clears throat> the Bible uh, tells us in verse number 4, and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all of his brethren, notice this, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And so we find that uh, they hated Joseph from the beginning because of the partiality that was shown toward him from Jacob. And then verse number five, and Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brethren and they hated him. And notice this phrase, yet the more. In verse number four, they hated him. But here in verse number five, their hatred toward him is compounded for the Bible said they hated him yet the more. And then we see also down in verse number eight, his brethren said unto him, shall thou indeed reign over us or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And then in verse number 11, and his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. So I'm not going to take time to recap everything this morning, but just to uh, bring us up to speed, Joseph's way uh, to the palace and to the place that God had for him was from, and you've heard the message, several's preached it over the years, or at least made reference to the outline, from the pit to the prison to the palace. And Joseph's a way to prominence and way to leadership was through rejection, hatred, and uh, being rejected not only of his own brethren and his own household and his father, but he was also dealing with rejection externally outside the family. We saw yesterday that God's going to deal with um, the scriptures, God's going to deal with his family and uh, God's going to deal with Reuben. Uh, Reuben had lost his testimony to be able to save uh, Joseph uh, from the hands of his brethren. Uh, several things. One, he compromised. Secondly, he didn't have the commitment to follow through and uh, do that which God had uh, given him as a standard of life. And so we find that in this passage of scripture that God's going to deal with him for 22 years. Uh, God's going to mold and make the uh, character of Joseph and made him fit uh, for that which God had in store for him. I want to say this, that if a man of Joseph's caliber is going to be in great leadership and position, God's going to have to put him through certain 
uh, schools of hard knocks, if I could put it that way. Uh, as a missionary, we often say that you can have a graduate degree from any college you want. You can have your uh, GED or your high school diploma. You can have all the experience of ministry that you desire. But God will put every single missionary through the school uh, that he has intended for them. There's certain things of life and ministry in every capacity that we can only learn through the school of God himself. And so there are certain things that God will put us through. There are areas in my life that may not uh, be really any uh, challenge to me that I go through and face them in my life. But to you, it may be a major mountain and hurdle that you have to cross over and vice versa. And so God knows each individual's heart and God uses specialized, I believe, training dealing with the specific areas of life uh, that we will be faced with. And I look back over the years, I've said this often to several of the staff and those who we worked with over the years. It's not just since I got saved and called into the ministry that God has prepared me for the work that he has for me. But I go back all the way until the time I was young, as far back as I can remember, the various things that happened in my life, God was preparing me even then. If we believe that God sets men of God apart from the womb and calls them into the ministry, then we must believe that from the womb, God begins to prepare the man for the work that he has. The training that Joseph received would uh, humble him. And we saw yesterday as we looked at it, it was not just the brothers that uh, face guilt and uh, issues. The Bible said in the scriptures, in fact, we <clears throat> looked at it in uh, the scripture in Genesis 42 and verse number 21, uh, that the Bible says, and they said one to another, this is Joseph's brother, we are verily guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the anguish of his soul. And so we saw through this passage of scripture that Joseph, when all of this was happening, somehow we get the impression that Joseph just kind of went along with it. He had no struggles, no battles, no uh, issues concerning the matter. But his brethren testified and said, we saw the anguish of his soul. In other words, he expressed what was in his heart. He expressed his, uh, his disappointment. He expressed his uh, discouragement, if I may put it that way. They, he was able to express what was in his heart. And they saw visually what was taking place in his heart and the battle that was taking place in his soul. And the Bible says this, they saw the anguish of his soul when, we, when he besought us. And so we find that he pleaded with his brethren. The Bible said they saw the anguish of his soul, and then the Bible said he besought them. He pleaded with them concerning the matter. We don't know exactly what he said, but we can imagine that probably of said, brethren, don't do such a thing. Uh, I have done nothing amiss to you. I've not uh, done anything to deserve what I'm getting, all the hatred. And yet the Bible says that when they pleaded with him, it was nothing to them. And so we find that again, God is making preparation of a servant and preparing them for what he has for them. I'm not going to take time to go through all of this today because I want to try to wrap it up today um, <clears throat> and move on to something else. But I do want to mention this, that in Joseph's life, when God was done with him, he becomes a type of Christ in the Bible in that the Bible does not reveal uh, any sin or any negative concerning Joseph. And he's often used as a type of Christ in the Old Testament. And yet he went through rejection. Christ went through rejection of uh, the Bible. He himself made very specific reference to that. Uh, the Bible tells us that uh, he was hated uh, of the Jews. And so we find that Joseph was hated of his brethren. And uh, Joseph was in prison. Christ was in prison. And uh, there's so many things that are similar between these two. But God is making a servant. God is preparing him for the work and the ministry that he has for them. The key to uh, being able to serve God and to allow him to have full preeminence in your life is to be able to submit to his will regardless of circumstances. Uh, regardless of your possessions, regardless of your position, um, you know, I've and I said this the other day, <clears throat> Brother Russell's um, 60th ministry anniversary. I've been in the ministry for 44 years now. Thank God for a man who's preached faithfully for 60 years. Amen. And I think I said this even during one of our recent advanced training classes. I have um, learned administration. I've learned organization and structure. And uh, these things are tools for the preacher. Uh, there are tools that help us to advance the ministry. There are tools to help us fulfill the call of God upon our lives. 
I want to say something this morning. I've said it uh, twice recently, and it's been really on my heart lately. And that is that thank God for organization. Thank God for administration. Thank God for structure. Thank God for vision. To have a vision. Uh, that's wonderful. But I'm going to tell you something. Without the divine presence of God, it's nothing. You can have all the organization you want, but if God's not in it, you're not going to accomplish anything. You can have all the vision you want. If God's not in it, you're not going to accomplish anything. And so we find that God's dealing with uh, Joseph and he's dealing with him with the structure and the things of his life that need to be worked on. But the main thing with Joseph is when Joseph comes to the end of his life, when it's all revealed about uh, everything that had taken place with his brethren, Joseph said to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant Amen. it for good. Amen. Joseph had the right perspective. Amen. You know, he could have gotten bitter and angry and resentful and rejectful like everybody else and like his brothers, but he stayed focused. He didn't allow his circumstances to cause him to become bitter. Bitter against God and bitter against what the Lord had in store for him. I'm going to go to Genesis 50, and we've recapped most of this this morning. Now I'm going to just make a, a brief closing statement. We find it in Genesis in chapter number 50. We find in, let's go to chapter 49, verse number 33. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. Now, after all of these years, Jacob is called home to be with the Lord. He's got his beloved Joseph now. And all of his brethren are gathered around his bedside. And in verse number 50, and Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, physicians, to balm his father and the physicians and bombed Israel. And then the 40 days were fulfilled for the morning of his passing. And then we find as we go to the end of chapter number 50, as we begin to close the book of Genesis, notice in verse number 14, and Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren. And all that were up with him, that went up with him to bury his father, after he had buried his father. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will preadventure hate us. Notice, if you would, their speculation. There's no truth behind this. Joseph has already reconciled with them. Yeah, yeah. They've already worked out their odds and their difference, but now they're still dealing with the guilt and the decisions they made. I'm telling you, we better be careful with the decisions that we make. We recently did a, a study on Israel uh, and going into the promised land, the land of Canaan, the 10 spies came out and they discouraged the brethren and they went not in. And the Bible said that God killed those spies and God killed those that were associated because of their discouraging the brethren. God takes discouragement very uh, seriously when we are involved in discouraging others. But in this passage of scripture, in verse number uh, 15, they have speculated now and they said, Joseph will preadventure hate us and will certainly requite us uh, for the evil which we had done. And they sent messengers unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall you say unto Joseph, Watch this, forgive, I pray thee now, the trans trespass of thy brethren and their son, for they did unto thee evil. And now I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy servants of God and of thy father. And Joseph I went, I wept when, he, when they spake to him. Now watch in verse number 18, and I'll close out here momentarily. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God. And Joseph understands that in the closing of his life, he may not have understood it when his brethren were throwing him into the pit, and selling him into bondage. He had anguish in his heart. The Bible said he pleaded with them. He may not have understood it. He may not have understood when he was in prison. He may not have understood when uh, he was falsely accused. He may not have understood all the things that he went through, but when it's all said and done and Joseph looks back upon his life, yes. he says this, am I in God's stead? Yes. In other words, what he's saying is, 
this was all by the hand of God. It was all orchestrated Amen. by the hand of God because God had a bigger purpose in my life and God knew that it was through the valleys of my life that he had prepared me for what I have. And I want to read one last passage and we'll be done. In verse number 20, but as for you, you thought it, you thought evil against me, but God bent it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. And I want to stop there for the sake of time. Let me just say this this morning. If God wants to make you and I into a servant and get us where he wants us to be, don't reject the rejection. Amen. Don't push off and press off the challenges of ministry. Don't push off the humiliating or humbling circumstances we face in life, the challenges, for it's in those times and those seasons that God breaks, he makes, and molds and remolds his servants. Amen. If you want to be a Joseph, then you better be prepared for rejection. Yes, sir. You better be prepared for a hatred. You better be prepared for a pit, a prison. But in the process, God's preparing us for the palace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, baby. Let us not forget, the making of a servant is not easy. Never scoff the things that God puts you through. Allow yourself to be molded yes. and made yes. under the hand of Almighty God. Amen. So much to be said here this morning. I tried to make a brief recap, a recap so I could close things out today. And so I'd ask if you would, let's uh, pray that God will continue to be with the ministry, supply the needs. Again, I want to say thank you to those that have come and uh, the preachers and thank you, Brother Harrelson, for bringing them. And then good to see our own missionaries here today. Uh, let's close in a song today. And TJ, let's sing that God is so good.